This key concept video looks at the sine and cosine rules. Okay, now these, the application of these rules appear in pretty much every single IBMS studies paper. Um, so I recommend becoming very familiar using these and also practicing plenty of questions. Uh, the formulas are in your formula book, so you don't need to remember these. Uh, both of these two cosine rule formulas are there. They're used for different purposes. They're the exact same rule, just rearranged differently. One's to find an unknown side, one's to find an unknown angle. The sine rule, I think that the top one is provided. Uh, however, I also like to also use this one here, which is the exact same rule, just the fractions flipped on both sides, which is perfectly fine. So depending on if I'm choosing, if I'm looking to find a side, I'll probably use the top one. If I'm looking to find an angle, I'll probably use the bottom one. But first things first, I just want to talk about the difference between the capital letters and the lowercase letters. I see this mistake quite a bit. So the capital letters stand for the angle. So in this case here, this capital A is in relation to this angle that I'm shading of this triangle. Now the capital letter A, the angle, will always be opposite its lowercase counterpart, the lowercase A, which will be the side length from here to here. So it's very important to remember that. The lowercase a can't be here or it can't be here. It's always going to be opposite its counterpart capital letter angle. So for example, if I labeled this angle here as B, then the side length B needs to be here. And likewise, if I label this capital letter C for this angle here, lowercase c, which is sometimes hard to tell, sometimes maybe put an underline, means the side length C here. Okay, so, and then the, the final point that I wanted to talk about is, okay, when do I use the sine rule and when do I use the cosine rule? Well, over time, as you practice it, uh, you will just sort of naturally choose the correct one. However, uh, to, to summarize, the statement would be, well, do I know an angle and its opposite side length? So for example, of our triangle here, do I know one particular angle, so let's say angle A and its lowercase counterpart side length a if we do know those so if we do know the angle and its opposite side we will always be using the sine rule if we don't know that pair of angle and opposite side length we'll be using the cosine rule so that's the general rule of thumb do i know an angle and its opposite side length if so i use the sine rule if i don't know that i'll need to use the cosine rule um, and the final thing i want to talk about the cosine rule is um, the selection of the side and the other two sides. So let's take this formula here, this top one here. It's very important that if we're looking at side length A, we must have the opposite angle in the formula and then the other two adjacent sides. So we can't, for example, use, we're finding this side length A here and then use this angle down here. It needs to be the opposite angle. Okay, so that's a uh, brief overview of the sine and cosine rule. Again, these are in your formula books. So you don't really need to remember them. Uh, from now, I just recommend plenty of practice of these questions.